Hey, Shireen, how is Tasmania today? Nice and sunny again. <laughs> no hey, rain like Queensland. So we're going to talk about your business, uh, which which kind of the, the world knows as News Express Leaven. You are uh, on kind of the main street of Ulverston in Tasmania. Yep. I was doing a little bit of research. Ulverston's got about 12,000, 13,000 people. Yeah, outlying areas probably double that. Right. And when we met the other day, you said something interesting, both you and Wayne, your husband said something interesting, and that is that, um, you know, you guys have lived there all your life, yeah. but you've got kids who some have gone away and come back and you've got extended family. Everybody lives in the area. Yes, they do. Because it's yeah, beautiful I'm, and safe. The, and... Yeah, the furthest away, we've got a niece and a nephew probably 100 kilometres away, but our extended family apart from my father, um, is all here. And, and I mean, just curious, why do you think that is? Why do you think people who have have lived a while in Ulverston just want to stay there? Um, I think it's the lifestyle. We're close to the beach, but we're also close to the mountains. It's very laid back. Um, any sporting facilities are within 10 minutes drive. Mm. So, Just walking walking up the main street, my feeling was that um, I had a good range of shops to choose from, yeah. um, and uh, it it even though it's it's kind of it's not a tiny town, it doesn't have a big city feel to it. So it feels it feels safe. It's easy to navigate. Like you say, you're right near the beach. It's just fantastic. Yeah, yeah, and we're on the river. Yeah. So. And so so thinking about that, thinking about that kind of living situation. Um, how much has that played into the decisions you've made around the business? Um, we do get a lot of tourists through. So we don't only cater for the locals um, because in the summertime our caravan parks are full. We've got well, three caravan parks close by mm. and they're always full in the summer. And in the winter we get all the grey nomads that come down for the snow. It's pretty so, lovely. Um, yeah, let's we cater for a broad range, I guess. Let's jump in and um, show people what we're talking about here. And and the funny thing is, I mean, you, you look at the outside of the shop, and um, it, it's it's a little bit hard to tell what it is. Um, yeah. There's the signage for the newspaper, which makes sense because the Advocate is very much a strong local paper, isn't it? Yes, it is. Yep. So it makes sense that that's pitched out the front. But mm -hmm. even there in the window, we get a bit of a sense that this is not what we would expect a usual sort of news agency shop to be. So, you know, you've got some interesting fixtures there. You've got handbags in the window. You've got others, other gifts. This is just before Mother's Day. So you've got a range of gifts there. But really, it's when you get into the shop that you see something completely unexpected. And here I am kind of standing here just inside the door. You've got this beautiful black painted wall down the side, which is just, it's just fantastic. It sets off the product beautifully, I think. We actually painted that when I came back from the New York trip. Right. After seeing a lot of the shops over there, um, I came up with that bright idea. <laughs> and, and look, we, we should explain to people, you came up with the bright idea. Who did the painting? Yeah, Wayne. <laughs> Wayne's your husband and he <laughs> he's he's made a lot of the fixtures in the shop too, hasn't he? Yeah. Yeah, all those tables you can see there, he's made all those. He did all that timber slat wall on the left-hand side. So these tables here that we're looking yeah. at now, he made? Yep. Yeah. So so I'm stepping into the shop, and what I see is a broad range of gifts. I've got some homewares there. I've got some some nice sort of personal stationery. I've got a few candles, some frames. I've got this product here that just looks fantastic, this glassware. Yeah. Um, and so there's no sense at all that a news agency and so 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 take us back because your parents used to own this business didn't they yeah. they bought it in 1986 and mm -hmm. um, magazines started at the front door of that black wall there was all magazines and newspapers yep um they had very small amount of gifts more souvenirs and gifts but cheap and nasty gifts yep what I call cheap and nasty. So yeah, it's totally changed. Right. 
Um, so let's step a little further. So we mentioned over on the right-hand side, uh, the black wall, it sets off products beautifully. Um, you've got a range of homewares products there. You've got the fun ducks, and then you've got leather products, leather bags. How are the bags selling for you? Yeah, um, they have their moments. Sometimes they're a bit slow, but overall they tick over quite well. So the most expensive bag you would have in, in shop at any one time is worth how much? Uh, 300 And so here you are, originally identifying as a news agency business, now yeah. transformed really under what you and Wayne have done, yeah. selling a $300 bag when yeah. you have some retailers in your channel saying, oh, we can't sell a gift worth more than $20. Well, when we started, we used to focus on gifts under $20. Yeah. And I guess it wasn't until we joined News Express that we got a bit more adventurous. Yeah. We found that it worked. So we swing around. You've got uh, Lisa Pollock product here. You've got a bit of everyday um, sort of gifting and homewares type items. Then you've got this section, which is kind of about sort of creating a really nice smelling and comfortable and warm home. Yeah. Um, this is a little more everyday in terms of gifting, but still beautiful quality product. Yeah. Yep. And, we can present every day on the smell as you walk into the shop. Yeah. So. Yeah. That's fantastic. Okay, so let's go a little further down. And even here, when you're doing fixtures, you know, you, you're not just using a standard table. You put yeah. some, some grass there just to make yeah. it look a bit more appealing. Yeah, just to make things pop a bit. So these sort of changes that you make, how often are you working on the shop floor and, and making changes? Constantly. Sort of every day? Um, uh, probably not every day, but... Um, Every week or two, we change right. things. Around. Okay. Um, then you've got these beautiful angels. Um, and, and now I'm looking back towards the front of the shop just to yeah. try and show people how different it feels. And and you, you have created these different textures and different spaces. So it doesn't all feel the same. It doesn't all just feel, you know, old school retail, brightly lit. Yeah. Yeah. You've got your, your cards in there. Then you've got the uh, this range here. This is sort of more a men's gift range, I think. Yes. Yeah, that's our men's corner. Um, and you've got your Mother's Day sort of table celebrating mum, which is terrific. Um, then you have the sensory products, the Nido products. I imagine they're pretty popular with people. They're very popular. Yeah. yeah. The, not only with kids, adults too, um, but, yeah, they're a great product. I didn't check. Is there a toy shop in town? No. Right. Oh, there is a small one, but she's more educational toys. Yeah, yeah. Not every day. So you do pretty well in the toy spaces. We'll see in a yeah. moment. What interested me is how you use every piece of space. So so this this sort of nook that we're looking at here, if you enter from the, the other end, it takes you down into a basement below the shop. Yeah. But instead of just having a blank wall, you've got your pens there. Yeah, because they don't stick out very far and our aisles are quite narrow. Yep. So we figure that, that no one's going to hurt themselves on those. <laughs> um, and then you've got these sort of toys here and then you've got the, the fantastic Mad Mia socks in the middle that look nice and bright and attention-grabbing, um, which are just great. Um, uh, games, you've, you've got a, a pretty good range of games and then on the other side of this stand you've got your jigsaws. Yeah. Um, so you, you're, again, you're a, on the one hand, you're a news agency, but really you're this gift and game shop that is satisfying a broad range of needs. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. We don't just focus on one thing. Yeah. So and then you've got stationery. You've got a good range of everyday stationery. Yeah. Well, we don't have a stationery in town, so that yep. goes well. Now, you also have a really nice range of baby-related items. Um, so the, what I'm seeing in the shop is these small areas where, you know, okay, I know I'm in front of the baby section. Before I knew I was in front of the game section. You're really making an effort to tell stories um, in these kind of condensed spaces where people, the shopper who's shopping for something for a baby is going to find what they're looking for here. Yeah. Yeah, well, I figure if you're going to look for, say, a baby gift, you don't want to be going all over the shop looking for something. Yeah. So 
can have it in one area and give them a choice. Yeah. Now, this is one of my most favourite parts of the shop. <laughs> Only because I entered the front door and I'm like, what is that green and gold stuff down the back right-hand corner? And you've got here the John Deere product, which obviously speaks for itself. You know, you've got this awesome these awesome John Deere products that are just fantastic. You know, because you're in a regional part of the country, I think it makes sense to have it. But the other thing here is over here on the left-hand side and on the right-hand side, Wayne was telling me that these are old boxes that he rescued from... His dad. Some, his dad's house. Yes. Yeah, and after his dad passed away and his mum went into the home, yeah. the house was sold, we got those out of his man cave. <laughs> right. So he's taken these out of your da his dad's man cave and converted yeah. them into retail shelving. Just yep. And that's what they are. You know, you can see they're pennant kerosene boxes. Yep. Uh, and he was telling me there was still oil on them and it was just yep. fantastic. And th it's so rustic. They just look so good. It's he pretty much pressure cleaned them and that's how they came up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just fantastic. And then inside a box, you've got something like this. It just looks so good, so appealing. Yeah. Yep. Um. And then you've got these other boxes on the other side where you've got your plush range, which is, again, just very appealing. It just looks so fantastic. Wayne just made those boxes out of pallets. Really? He just yeah. got pallets and made the boxes? Yeah, pulled pallets apart and used the timber. Right. Yeah. He, just... he, he um, I mean, he's good making stuff. And uh, how is he with when you say, hey, Wayne, I've got another idea. Is he, is he ready and waiting for you to tell him what he has to do? Well, Mark, after you came the other day and made your suggestions of our magazines, as soon as you left, he started pulling that apart. <laughs> wow. He so, seems to like a good project. Yes, he likes to be busy. Yeah. And, yeah, he gets a lot of satisfaction out of creating. Doing, he, I mean, he's doing a fantastic job. He's created for you there a wall that I could see other retailers might spend a couple of thousand dollars buying. Yeah. And it, just... we, get, we get those pallets for free, so it's only his time, basically. Yeah. I could imagine retailers would want to fly him around Australia to do this for them. Um, <laughs> <No. laughs> uh, that's the the other side of the, the baby display. So you've got some really nice uh, product there. Um, then you've got your jigsaws. Uh, so yeah. that gives us a sense sort of halfway down the shop. We you yeah. talked about the magazines. We've got the magazines over on the right-hand side. Now that's in the process of changing. You, you're going to have about half of that space now for magazines? Yes. I think um, I think there might be five or six bays there, and we're cutting that back to two. Right. Good he's, stuff. He's going to make more of those wood timber boxes. Excellent. Um, move all our um, children's stuff up there together. That's fantastic. Um, so this is the entrance to the basement. Yeah. And, um, you know, you don't, you're not hoarders, so you don't store a lot of stuff there, but the basement is a useful place for you to cycle fixtures through and things like that. Yeah. Yeah, we have a little bit, like I've got a lot of my barley stock down there mm. um, and excess lollies and things, but yep. mostly a little bit of stationery, not much. Just if you yeah. get a box or something in and you can't fit it on the shelf. <laughs> um, at the counter, I thought it was pretty interesting. You've got um, these sort of premium chocolate products that are appealing. Um, so it's not your everyday kind of the, the candy you'd see in a supermarket. I thought it was interesting that you, you're making a statement in the Pokemon space. Yeah. Um, and that's really good because Pokemon's a, a good traffic driver. Yeah. And then, as I said, you've got this, this glassware at the front that's so unique. And you said people in town are really enjoying this? Yeah, that has gone gangbusters. I yeah. think now we've probably sold, sold over a uh, 100 pieces in about five weeks. Right. That's so, fantastic. Yeah. So there's another look down the shop. And, you know, it, it is a narrow shop. Yeah, it is. I think you're making really good use of the space to create these different zones that become appealing for people um, as they move around the shop and get a sense of it. Yeah. Areas where they can see things. And you're even using behind the counter really well. So here you're pitching Bruto, obviously. Um, yeah. But you're, you're 
you're as someone's at the counter to make a purchase, they're able to see these items and it becomes an impulse opportunity. Yeah, Rido does well for us. Yeah. Although it's been hard to get stock of late. Yeah. So I'll stop sharing my screen. And, you know, you were talking before about um, how you took the business over from your parents. Um, before taking over the business, what was your career? I worked with Australia Post. Right. When I left school. And then I did, oh, whilst I worked for mum and dad, I did an accounting degree um, just while my children were little. And because Wayne worked away a lot, he worked on bridges with the Department of Main Roads. So right. he was away a lot. And I basically went back to uni because I was bored of the night when my kids were in bed. Um, so I did that before we purchased the agency. So um, you both didn't have kind of retail backgrounds. You bought the business and you ran a pretty traditional news agency. And how long, when did you start this transition? When we joined News Express. So that's about what? Seven. Seven years ago? Yeah, I think so. So so in seven years, you've taken it from that traditional business with magazines down the middle and cards and stationery and cigarettes, I think, even back then. Yeah, yeah. And now, when I walk through the shop, yes, you've got some news agency lines, but really you're a, a local gift shop catering to a broad range of gift-giving opportunities. Yeah, yes, sure. And so change has been a big thing for you. How yeah. much do you enjoy change i love it i love <laughs> getting the comments from customers and oh what have you got in you now and oh this looks so good and, is this the news agency yeah yeah That's the big one um but yeah i love the um changing and moving with the times i guess yeah i mean you look up and down the street there there are some some good shops on the the street and there are some not so good shops. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, you know, I would think you stand out as a beacon for uh, almost, it doesn't matter what I've got to buy, buy a gift for, I'm going to be able to find something in there to satisfy that need. Yes, yeah. That pretty much sums it up. Yeah. Um, so I know that that you and Wayne are, are looking to sell the business and yeah. um, think of what's next in your life. How do you think you'll go if the business does sell? Um, we'll miss it for sure. I miss the yeah. people. Um, I'm sure Wayne will enjoy sleeping in. <laughs> <laughs> but it'll take a while to get used to it. Because prior to joining News Express, I opened a cafe because I'd been in the shop 25 years and I wanted to change. Mm. So stupidly I opened a cafe. and. We had that for six years, so but running two businesses was just too hard, and that drained the news agency because I was at the cafe and didn't have my focus on the news agency. Yep. And then that drained us financially as well. So by the time we joined News Express, we were in trouble, and um, the best thing we ever did was join News Express. Um. So, I, I you know you talk about joining News Express and that. The thing is, I think between the two of you, you've made really good decisions in the business. And I think that's very much reflected in um, how friendly and appealing the shop feels. Um, and again, I can walk around the shop and when I'm in front of an area, I know what area I'm in. You know, you go to some shops and you just, you get lost because it's just such a, a rambling sort of mess and in your case, things are well designated. You've used different colours on the wall to reflect different areas. You've got different fixtures, like with the John Deere, that help you, people understand where they are. And um, I think that's the mark of really clever retailing. Oh, thank you. <laughs> um, so, look, I, I, I... A lot of that came from me going to America with you. Yeah. Yeah. Um, New York and just seeing different things over there and what you can and can't do. Well, I mean, you mentioned you mentioned New York and, and, and it's interesting because if I say to a retailer today, oh, we should go to New York and look, immediately, if they haven't been and haven't really looked carefully, they'll think, oh, 
Times Square and Broadway shows and it's it's that noisiness. But the reality is when we were in Brooklyn together and we looked at some of those shops in Brooklyn, really small independent retail, that's where you see the inspiration. Yeah, that was my favourite area. Yeah. Oh, that the Cold Spring, that was really cool. Cold yeah. Spring is an amazing city to see. And, and the thing is, you know, what they do in Cold Spring, um, you could almost do in Ulverston where you are. If you think about the shop we went to called Old Souls that was kind of a hunting mm -hmm. menswear outdoorsy shop, yeah. if you were to put Old Souls in Ulverston, mm -hmm. I think it would work brilliantly. Yeah, yeah. Um, because you've got, as you say, you're right near the mountains, so you've got lots of people coming through who are doing walks and things like that. I think it would work really well. Yeah, yeah. But hey, you're looking at you're looking at, at selling and and oh, moving yeah. the next phase of your life. So let's not get into that. Um, uh, you know, it it's hard work owning and running a shop. Um, and you know, you it doesn't seem to have kind of damaged you. Um, you know, you've still got energy and happiness and things like that. Um, and do you think some of that has to do with the fact that you're in a beautiful part of the world? Yes, I wouldn't want to live anywhere else. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I love going on holidays, but um, like the traffic and chaos on the in the big cities. Yeah. No, I prefer to live here any day. Yeah, yeah. Well, look, thank you for... Uh, letting us have a look at the shop and, and do the video. Um, good luck with um, finding a, a buyer to buy the business. And um, I, uh, you mentioned, Wayne, about um, sleeping in. Uh, we should mention the fact that, that you still deliver papers too, don't you, from the yes. shop? Yes. And he, what time does he start? Oh, he doesn't start till five. Right. But the pa we have our daughter and son-in-law deliver the papers for us and they start at four. Right. So if they have a weekend off, Wayne does the deliveries. Wow. Long hours. Yeah. But thank you, Shireen, and we'll talk soon. No worries. Thanks.